Welcome back to the One Question Leadership Podcast. I'm Glenn Caruso, head football coach at the University of St. Thomas, and so happy you tuned in. You know, quite often we get so caught up in the daily grind of work or coaching or recruiting that we don't often take time to reflect. I would encourage everybody to take just a few minutes each day to try and see the bigger picture, to stop and realize that in the end, we're going to be judged on what we choose to believe, who we choose to love, and what we decide to leave behind in the hearts and minds of not just our players, not just our coworkers, but also our children. And remember, if we're doing it right, we're coaching football for life. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at 1Q Leadership. This episode is a re-release of a conversation I had with Coach David Shaw, head football coach at Stanford, back at the 2018 American Football Coaches Association's National Convention. It's one of my favorite episodes. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm here at the 2018 AFCA National Convention. My guest today is Coach David Shaw. David Shaw is currently the head coach at Stanford. He's been there in total for 11 years, and this is his seventh year as a head coach, and he's been coaching for almost 25 years. Greetings, Coach Shaw. Thanks for joining us today. Nice to be here. Now, Coach, coaching for almost 25 years, you've done a lot of recruiting. And I've heard you talk a lot about recruiting here at the AFCA and when, you, when you're out talking to people and your staff. And you say that when you're recruiting as coaches, coaches need to be the grown up in that conversation when talking to recruits. And there's a, a specific way that we need to communicate to young people and tell them that you're going to come here and we're going to help you grow. Can you expand on that philosophy and and tell us why it's important in today's environment with today's youth and also how has it helped you at Stanford to create and maintain an environment for success? Well, when my wife and I uh, decided to have kids and we talked to people that were parents, um, the best advice we ever got was start as you mean to go on. And I always remember that. And in recruiting for me, that says a lot with how you engage young people initially um, and stay consistent with uh, how you communicate with them and what you say to them and how you say it. Uh, I think in our sport, so many people cross the line, in my opinion, and it's, it's by choice um, to befriend them. And, you know, and I'm not mean to them by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but I also let them know early on, I'm not a teenager. I'm not in my early 20s. I'm in my 40s. I've lived uh, a bit of a life. Hopefully, get a chance to live a lot more. Um, but by benefit of my experience, I want to establish for them what I believe it takes to be successful. Um, I'm not enticing them with recruiting, with giving them promises. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing any of that stuff. For me, I want to let them know how the program that we have will help them achieve things academically, athletically, and socially. And they have to depend on that. And in order for that to happen, though, somebody has to set the standard. Somebody has to say, this is what's right and this is what's wrong. This is what we do and this is what we don't do. As opposed to, hey, come here and do whatever you want. I think when you establish that relationship in recruiting, when they get to your place, and people call it the de-recruiting, the de-recruitment process, once they get to campus, then you have to try to become something else and say, okay, well, now I'm going to be a disciplinarian. Well, during the recruiting process, I was kind of your buddy. Now I'm kind of telling you what to do and what not to do. Now I'm starting to raise my voice at you. Um, now I'm a, I'm a son of a coach. I'm also a son of a teacher in that before you ra- raise your voice, you better establish a relationship. So for me, that's what my, that first comment was and what my process is, is I'm going to establish the relationship and I'm going to hold my part of it, which is to provide an environment that's going to be conducive to you being successful on and off the football field. And at the same time, have a standard of behavior, a standard of work ethic, a standard of performance that I want to hold you to. And for me, I have to be consistent there if I want you to be consistent uh, as a young man that I'm recruiting. So for, that that's why I talk about being the adult, being the person who looks forward and saying, okay, in order for you to be successful, here's what I need to be for you. Not what I need to be for me and not what I think I should be uh, in, a, in, a, in an abstract way. It's like, here's how I can help you be successful. So you come here, you come to us. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to put my arm around you on a tough day. Um, and I'm going to put my, my, my foot in your backside when I think you need it um, and explain to you why. And at the end of the day, when you look back 20 years from now, hopefully you look back and say, you know what? I'm glad Coach Shaw was honest with me. I'm glad he was hard on me. I'm glad he raised the expectations for me that when I look back, I didn't have those expectations, those high expectations for myself, whether it's on or on the football field. 
So that's why for me, our job is so important. And I think so many people blur that line and these young people don't benefit from us blurring the line. They don't benefit from us not holding them accountable because they don't learn uh, how the world works once they leave us. And once they leave us, some of them go into shock. They're surprised. They don't understand why their words matter. They don't understand why their actions matter. They don't understand why when their performance is up and down, they get fired. Um, so for me, I, I want to establish that for those guys in our program. Right off the bat, and you've been coaching, we said, for almost 25 years. I assume that conversation hasn't changed with kids from when you began coaching to what it is now in terms of being an adult in the conversation. Kids receive information different now. How has that affected your philosophy on this? You once told a story about a couple of kids you had to call them and say you don't have a scholarship to Stanford anymore because of something you read in a paper about them. Talk to me about how over time relaying the same message has changed in terms of how you deliver it to kids. The thing is, the world has changed. Um, and I try to remind my coaches, the world that is producing these young men has changed. So these young men are coming in differently than they came in before. Um, and for whatever reasons, uh, social media is, is an un, and people just point the finger at social media. But for me, what it is, is it's, there's, they have more access. So in some ways, they're more educated. They know more. They're, they've been exposed to more good and bad. But it also, to me, what it's done for them or done to them, it's made them very self-centered. Um, it's, it's been very much, I'm okay. I should be able to do whatever I want, say whatever I want. I'm not going to conform. And there's some of that that's great. There's some of that for a young person to come in and have your own principles and be able to stand in those principles in the face of opposition. That's one thing. It's another thing to come in and say, I'm a superstar. I don't need to work, but I want I want all the benefits. That's the educational process that I think was taught so well uh, in our parents' day, taught pretty well in our day, and is not getting taught well at all uh, now uh, through this world where everybody gets a trophy. So be, being able to instill and reinstill the work ethic that it takes to be successful, that's ir irrespective of your talent. Um, setting up an environment to where the best on your team and the worst on your team are all going to go through the same the same situation. And we're going to play the guy that's better. That's absolutely true. But at the same time, you have responsibilities uh, to this team and to yourself to be at your absolute best. Don't give me 50 percent and tell and let me think that's going to be worth it because it's not going to be worth it for me. Um, so it just establishing a standard of effort and a standard of performance and a standard of behavior that is going to help us be successful in football. But like I said before, the most important thing to me is they look back 20 years from now and say, man, I'm, a glad, I'm glad that got established in college because I've seen people my age falter because they don't know how to work. They don't know how to be held accountable. They don't know how to answer to people without saying, hey, don't be hard on me. They want to look back and say, hey, you know what? Tell me what the standard is and, and hold me to that and being appreciative of that relationship. And what you're saying, if I can even sum it up even more based on the question I ask, is like the conversation you've always had is actually becoming a lot more important now than it was before. Let's take it on, a, on another level here real quick. I saw you out there. You were talking to Bob Bowlesby. He was an athletic director when you uh, began at Stanford. And now uh, the athletic director is, is uh, Bernard Muir. Is, when you talk about adults and leading staff and evaluating staff, how is the environment with the athletics, athletics department to you as a coach and then to you, to your staff, in terms of that conversation, a mature version of the conversation you have with the kids. How does that play out in your environment? Well, we've had a lot of those conversations at Stanford, partially because, and we believe we're, we're getting the best of the best, honestly. And it's not just football. I mean, we're getting high-level achievers at Stanford University. These are accomplished young people coming in. But in my opinion, they're coming in without some of the groundwork that is necessary to be successful. And I've heard somebody refer to this generation as the peach generation because they bruise too easily, um, right or wrong. But there's some element to that. And for us on a high level, high education level, to realize that this is who's coming in, there are great kids. They are smart. They are bright. They are exposed to a lot. They have untold possibilities of things that they could achieve. But there's a deficiency there. And it's our job to recognize it to help them recognize it, because we just recognize it doesn't matter. They need to recognize, okay, here's where you're deficient. Here's where we can help you be more consistent, um, 
be more ha- able to handle difficulties, difficult situations, and come back and be and have the resolve uh, to be strong in character, strong in your mentality, strong in your work ethic, to fight through things that are difficult. Whereas the narrative that that's coming into our world with these young people is, if it's hard, quit. Right. Transfer. If they don't Please. pat you on the back, then transfer. If you're not a superstar by the time you're a sophomore, then there's something wrong with the coaches. You need to go someplace else where they appreciate you. As opposed to being those young people say, hey, you know, if it takes me to be a junior or a senior before I reach my potential, then that's fine. I'm going to let these people push me and hold me to a high standard. And and if I don't understand, I can go to them and, and ask them why. And they can give me a, a program to say, here's what we think you can do. And here's the way for you to get there. And they, they walk across that stage after graduating, after having great playing seasons, and look back and say, I'm glad those coaches were hard on me. I'm glad they didn't let me achieve early on because I probably wouldn't have been able to handle it. That's that maturity that people have going through difficult times and sticking to it uh, and having people push them and be hard on them and love them at the same time. And, and that's that's what's having a great conversation with with some people uh, on the psychology thing. That's, that's, that's really what we're talking about is the ability to be critical. And, and have people be be critical upon you and being able to take that criticism without being defensive, without saying, you know what, you're just wrong. You just don't think that I'm as good as I think I am, so I'm going to go someplace else. So if somebody can tell me how great I am, that's, how, that's where I'm going to go be a superstar. Um, that, that's that's what's hard. And, and what, what our world is not teaching, it's a really simple word that is very, very complicated for a lot of our young people right now is humility. You can't self-evaluate unless you're humble enough to say that I'm not perfect. Exactly. And I asked a question relative to Bosby and Muir because Stanford, from the outside looking in, looks like they run things well. How is that approached in terms of when you're evaluated, in terms of uh, the grown-ups in the room, right? How is the approach to, hey, guys, we got a lot to work on here or we're not perfect, Without pointing somebody out in football, we do point people out real quick and say, "Hey, we need you need to work on some things." Like, how how was that conversation on the administrative level and on the staff level with you and your and your coaches? I self evaluate a lot, and there's there's a there's a danger to it because I don't think the young people see it enough and understand it enough. So we lost to Washington State this year. I went in the locker room. And I told the guys, "Hey, I made a mistake. You know, a big chunk of this is on me." And I had some blank stares from the guys. We came back a couple days later in our team meeting. And I said the same thing again. There are things that I could have done better to help us win. And I promise you, I'm going to do those things from going, going forward. I was not perfect last week. And I don't think these young people are used to seeing someone, in particular someone in a position of power, truly say, I screwed up. That's on me. It's so easy for somebody in my position to say, well, that guy didn't make that block. That guy didn't catch that ball. The referee didn't make the call, the call right. Um, I wanted them to see me and I'm I'm being completely honest and open and saying, hey, you know what? I wasn't good enough this week. And I feel bad for you guys that I let you down. That, to me, opens the door for somebody else who's not the head coach to be able to say that same thing and say, you know what, coach? I was wrong, too. I didn't do what I could have done. I could have been better this week. So those of us in positions of power, we can't be so driven by our own status and, and and the picture that we need to have, that we want people to have of us, uh, which those pictures are never accurate because uh, we're all human beings. But to be able to stand there and say, you know what, I was wrong. I can be better. And I'm okay if you hold me to a higher standard because I want to be held to a high standard. And if I can do that, then I should be able to expect my coaches and my players to do that same thing and not in a way to, to be overly judgmental, but the way to say, you know what, let's just be open and honest. If, if, if you made a mistake, step and stand in front of your brothers and say you made a mistake. And they'll accept that and, and, and still hold you to a higher standard. So, okay, next time you go out there, we need, we need your best. Right. Exactly. Well, this information is excellent information. I, I am the same as you. I want a essay given back to me with red marks all over it so I can know how to improve, right? If it just says perfect on it, how am I going to know how to get better? So this philosophy, you can see it throughout your program at Stanford as long as you've been the head coach there. I definitely appreciate you joining me today on One Question. Good to see you, Ty. That was David Shaw. David is the head coach at Stanford University. And this is Ty Brown with One Question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today.
This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.